I got my surgery date. I get surgery on the 15th and my pre-op is on the 9th. I'm so excited. So my surgery got cancelled. Um, well, not cancelled, but postponed. Instead of the 15th, it's going to be the 22nd. And instead of the um, pre-op being on the 9th, it's on the 14th. <laughs> so I guess the next time I'll see you is at my pre-op. Oh, God damn. So my surgery got cancelled. Um, well, not cancelled, but postponed. Instead of the 15th, it's going to be the 22nd. And instead of the um, pre-op being on the 9th, it's on the 14th. <laughs> so I guess the next time I'll see you is at my pre-op. Oh, God damn. So today is the 14th of July because my surgery was postponed to the 22nd. My pre-op was postponed to today. So tomorrow was meant to be my surgery, but it's not going to be. So I just thought I'd talk through what happened in the pre-op. Um, and my battery's about to go find my camera, so that's nice. Basically, when I first arrived, I checked in, they gave me a form, and I just had to make sure my information was correct. And it had my old surgery date on there, but that's a different story. Um, then the nurse called me in once I was in the waiting room and she did my blood pressure, my heart rate and my weight just to make sure that's all good. Gave me a cup to pee in on the day of surgery just because, you know, you can't go into surgery if you're pregnant, which I'm not, but they've just got to check it because I'm a female. That's what they do, but whatever. Um... So I have to do that. Apparently, I'm going through the private hospital. So because of that, they're going to be in contact with me soon. I then went back in. She just like asked me if I had any questions, and I asked about my nose piercing. And she said I should be able to put in a plastic retainer and put tape over my nose. Um, so that's good. So I'm going to buy a plastic retainer tomorrow. Um, other than that. No eating and drinking past midnight, and it's meant to be an early morning surgery. So she says I should be there at about like 7.30, I think it was. But again, they're going to be in contact with me, apparently. Um, then I went back to the wing room, and the anesthesiologist came out, because that's who I had my pre-op with. And he just asked me a bunch of questions, asked me if I had questions, talked about what he was going to do, like, um, asked me if I had any side effects to the, like, different things. Apparently I'll be having paracetamol, ibuprofen, and tramadol before I even go into surgery, apparently. Because he asked me all about that and said that when I first get there, they'll be giving me paracetamol and ibuprofen, and he did say something about tramadol. Um, and then they would, when I'm on the table, he'll put in through the general anesthesia and all of that kind of stuff, which is pretty good. Um, apparently he's going to be there, like, with the surgery, so if it's a long surgery and I start waking up, that they can alert him and he can put more through so that, you know, I don't remember anything. But as he's, like, apparently it's like one in a thousand or something will wake up <laughs> during surgery, but that kind of scared me. And he's like, no matter if it's a ten-minute operation and they find nothing or, which I'm sure they won't, or it's too much for them to take out, but he was like, we don't want to talk about that. Or if it's a two-hour surgery and they were doing extensive stuff, I'll be under no matter what, which is good because they're cutting into me. Um, he then, yeah, asked me about the side effects of Tremadol because I do get some side effects from Tremadol. Um, and he got a little bit nervous, but as he said, it should be fine because I don't get severe side effects with the itchiness. Um, and... Other than that, I left. It was really quick. Um, my appointment was at 2.30, and I think I got out, like... 320 like I was in with the nurse longer than I was in with him and he just did a form and blah 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 made sure I was didn't have any questions and mum didn't have any questions and then I left and I came home so that's the gist of what happened 
I'm getting my clear retain tomorrow and then surgery on the 22nd. The nurse was like, no sex now. And I'm like, okay, I'm not having sex anyway. <laughs> Which is how I know that I'm not pregnant because you have to have sex to get pregnant. But yeah, that's the goal. And so I'm packing my bag right now. It is 6.53 a.m. Fuck's sake. Not really the time you want to be waking up with no sleep. I had a mate say the night last night. So if you guys can't hear me, I'm trying to be quiet. My grandparents just look sleep. <sighs> because of that, I got no sleep. <sighs> so, happy days. Um, I'm basically just wearing pajama pants and this oversized hoodie. I thought this was going to be the easiest thing to wear after surgery. So that's what I decided to wear. I got a new book yesterday. Let's go have surgery, I guess. Okay, guys. So, I'm out of surgery. Um, I'll show you my incisions when I get home. I do have the photos in a bag and all this information. Um, so, I went through a private hospital. So, I don't have to pay private costs because I went through a public health system. I got my surgery through the private hospital um and I was gonna I didn't I didn't do anything drowsy or anything coming out of it surprisingly I literally I had my we arrived there at like 7 30 and we went through the initial intake process and they gave me ibuprofen and paracetamol at about like 9 30 in the morning and I went in for surgery about 10 30 so about half an hour late because I was meant to go in at 10 sorry I feel real sick right now um Mum's gave me food. And my mum came in, she scrubbed up and came into surgery with me. Yep. The staff were amazing, like all the nurses were really nice. Like the anesthesiologist team was really nice. Like the whole time they're like, don't worry, you're under you're in good hands, blah 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 blah. I kind of I didn't freak out, they were just being like really nice. Um, and I woke up and my mum wasn't there with me. She wasn't allowed to be in the waking up area. I had just a nurse and she was really nice. She sat with me the whole time I was waking up. I was really cold. I started shaking. So she went and got me a warm blanket and put it around my neck to try and warm me up. She got me water and like was holding it with a straw so I could drink the water because I was really thirsty. Um, and then she could put me in a wheelchair once I was awake enough and took me straight through the recovery room and I suddenly recovery lounge I was in surgery for about an hour so I went in at like 10 30 and I got out like I wanted to go out of surgery like 12 30 one o'clock and then it took me like half an hour to wake up from surgery because it was like 1 30 when I woke up and it's 2 44 now and I'm at Macca's um I do have a lot of photos I'm going to insert after this and I'll show you the incisions and everything. Um, like it's just like the things are like just the photo of the IV and me and my hospital gown and everything. I'm like really awake and I do not know why. Um, they gave me food, they gave me two sandwiches and a cookie my, and they even got me a coffee because like I walked in and they even took like they put tape over my nose with my um, plastic nose ring in and I woke up and like the tape was gone. Like they took the tape off for me. Um, and my eye had the freaking needle that was in my arm was huge. Freaked out. She like she knows I'm terrified. The nurse was like knows I'm terrified of needle, so she ripped it out and like hit it behind her back when I saw it. I was like, holy fuck, that's huge. I freaked out at the size of that. Like that was in my arm, and I know I'm gonna bruise massively. I'll see if I can find the photos now. It's in the bag behind me. Um, but that was really nice and they brought me a coffee because I said how I hadn't had a coffee and I'm a coffee addict and that woke up and they literally got me a coffee. So this is page two. Um, and they did find some what they think is in, they did find some, there's that. And there's also some, so they took all the endometriosis they could find out. I think there was only like two little small dots, like it's really small. Um, and they found some growing on my intestines which they couldn't remove. But I will show you guys the live incisions and the photos when I get home. So I'll get the photos down in a second. I'm not even home yet. We're getting my medications. Um, but so I'll show you the incision. I'll only show you one of the dressings because the other one's like kind of in an inappropriate spot. 
and you don't need to see that. Um, I'm trying to still keep this bit PG-13. So that's that one, and then I have my other one like down here, like underneath my underwear. Um, I have real bad gas in my neck and shoulders, which they said was going to happen. Um, so I'll get that photo out and show you what we saw. Um, if you're squirmish, this might not be the best bit for you, but it's not that bad, okay? So I'll show you. So that little black thing there is endometriosis. So they have that there. There's a lot of photos of it. There's another photo of it, another photo of it. Um, there's also, I think it's on here. Is it on the other page? There's two pages full of photos. Oh, yeah, it's on this page here. Um, another photo of it there. But where is it? There's a little bit, like, there. You can't really see it on the photo, though. And there's also... On the wall between, I can't see it very well. I can't find the photo. But on the wall between my um, uterus and my intestines, they found baby, like growing ones. So um, endometriosis that is growing at the moment. And they can't remove it because it's so risky spot. So basically, I have, uh, we're getting a pre-op booked. Um, I've got to wear my compression socks, which I have on. And I'll just like put the photos in the end of the video of all the like inside the hospital and everything in the video of the food that I got. Right, as I end, like right before the end screen. Um, but basically, he's going to put me on to some sort of hormone, like not, so he can't decide if he's going to put me on birth control or a uh, suppressant. But basically he said um, the fact that I've lived with it so long because I started having symptoms when I was 7 years old and I'm 17. So that's 10 years I've been living with this for such a small amount and a lot of pain. Like I haven't been able to walk sometimes because of it. So I'm like very confused for such little amount there is. Um, but basically he said that it's because there is more growing now um, that he wants to try and stop it from spreading too much. And he said, like, that wall, it's all on my left side of my body too. And he said that wall literally is starting to be covered in it. Um, but they can't do anything for there because they can't get to it safely without causing massive, like, problems. So I have to live with it. But they sent away... That little one I showed you, they sent that away. They cut it out and sent it away to be found um, and make sure it is what it is. But I've been part of endometriosis group since I was 14 and I got my temporary diagnosis because my grandmother has it. Um, and like all my symptoms line up with endometriosis. So I was given the diagnosis of endometriosis before the surgery. So this was like the actual confirmation. So they're just going to make sure, but like I've seen the photos and it's identical to what all these other endometriosis sufferers have. Said they have more. Um, and I'm so confused about why I have so little and still so much pain. But I have, I do know people with stage four who have a lot can sometimes live with no pain. They don't even realize until it's something like a C-section and then they find out or a hysterectomy. And then there's people with like stage one, which I'd say I am, and they're living in intense pain. And what stage you are doesn't actually tell you how much pain you have, and I'm guessing that's why. Um, like I literally vomit from pain every period. Like it, my pain gets bad, and see that like I was terrified to go in, guys. I was crying last night. Like I was so scared that there wasn't gonna be anything. I was gonna be back to square one. Um, sorry. So, knowing that I see that, like, I know that's it's there, just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, you guys don't know how relieved I am. <laughs> um, but everything else looks healthy, um, and yeah, so I'm going to, I'll probably, like, end it here, and I'll do an update later on, on, like, like, this will just be the surgery vlog, and then I'll do another video later down the track, and I'll, like, take photos and show you guys. Um, and, and, like, my 
I'll post a post-op video. So after I go see him for my post-op and I'm all healed, I'll post it then. And then I'll have like show you photos of like when I take the bandages off and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's better than you guys having to wait for this video. I've got antibiotics, painkillers. They've given, because the anti, this with this can cause like thrush or a like UTI, they've give, he's given me some, um, a, some pills to take for after that. So after I go through the antibiotics course, I can take that to try and make sure that I don't have thrush. And he's also apparently prescribed me cream for just in case I can't take the pills. So, you know, mm. um, but yeah. I'll post the videos and like the photos and I'll see you back in a second. have seen the photos now and the video of my food um thank you guys so much for watching today's video oh. you guys yeah it's just it's crazy that's for damn sure but i'm gonna leave you guys now so you can go do whatever you want and i hope you guys have a good day um if you guys are experiencing any like, if you want to see more about my journey, like, up until this point, I do have a playlist, and I'll link it up in the cards up there for you. And if you feel like you know, like, every we know our bodies. If you're in pain so much so you're missing work or school, please do, like, try and get help. I was struggling from ages 7 all the way through to 14, so 7 years, just to be believed by someone that I did have like a problem like I used to I used to get blamed on is there issues at home is it because you're being bullied she's putting it on like I used to be in hospital in tears and pain it wasn't until I had a doctor come in a female doctor who went past my room when I was crying explaining why I was in so much pain hell at freaking 11 years old they thought I was looking for drugs just because I was in so much pain and like I still go in so much pain, so hopefully I have a little bit less pain now. Um, but like, holy fuck, like, it's hard. And even if you don't have endometriosis, there are still a lot of things that can go wrong. There's PCOS, there's, I can't say the other one, but it starts with A, and it's like endometriosis, but it's inside the, like, uterus. Like, there's a lot that can go wrong in there, and if you feel like something's not right, please do advocate for yourself find a doctor who will listen. I went through so many and it was because of one woman in a hospital who walked past like the bed. I was in crying and she asked me a couple of questions and she referred me to the gynecologist. And from there he actually believed me and I'm lucky that the first try I got believed and we've tried so much. I've been through so many birth controls now. I've gone through all the pills you can have. Um, I've tried so many different painkillers and it's been a massive journey. And, like, he's been, like, my doctor has been here with me since I was 14 getting my diagnosed, like, getting diagnosed, which was 2017, November 2017, was when I finally was believed and was able to be told you have suspected endometriosis. And here I am now, finally, 10 years after my first symptom started, and I finally now, like, once... I finally now have had the surgery. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Advocate for yourself. If you guys ever want a message or just want support, feel free to message me on Instagram or, like, Snapchat. I don't really reply on Snapchat, so Instagram's going to be the best place to message me. But all my social media links are down below if you guys want to check out my other videos. And I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.